Thank you for your interest in intra-abdominal hypertension in the Abvisor Autovalve Intra-Abdominal Pressure Monitoring Device. This video will introduce you to the Abvisor, how it works, how to set it up, and how to use it. However, before we talk about the Abvisor, let me briefly describe the disease process of intra-abdominal hypertension and why elevated intra-abdominal pressure harms the patient. A basic understanding of this physiology will help you understand the purpose of the Abvisor and the importance of measuring pressure in the abdomen via the bladder. Critically ill patients who are fluid resuscitated develop a capillary leak and third space fluid into all their tissues, including their intestines. This leads to edema within the intestinal cavity, causing abdominal distension and elevated intra-abdominal pressure. This elevated intra-abdominal pressure compresses the inferior vena cava and as a consequence, blood flow into the heart, also known as preload, drops off dramatically. The result is a decrease in cardiac output and reduced blood flow to critical organs. The reduced blood flow in combination with elevated intra-abdominal pressure often leads to renal and mesenteric ischemia. Simultaneously, elevated intra-abdominal pressure pushes up on the diaphragm, causing a rise in intrathoracic pressure, leading to lung injury and intracranial hypertension. The end result is poor tissue perfusion, which may lead to multiple organ failure and death. Because the bladder is contained within the abdominal cavity, pressure within the bladder directly correlates with pressure in the abdomen. For this reason, bladder pressure measurement through the Foley catheter is now considered the gold standard method for measuring and trending intra-abdominal pressure. The advisor takes advantage of this correlation by interfacing with the Foley catheter and transducing intra-abdominal pressure directly from the bladder. The Abvisor allows you to easily measure intra-abdominal pressure in less than 30 seconds, providing accurate, reproducible, and standardized measurements that can be critical in detecting and treating this life-threatening condition. Even though you should have a quick reference wall chart that shows how to set up and use the Abvisor, this video may help you further understand the use and application of the device. The Abvisor consists of several key components and features, all combined to make bladder pressure measurements simple to do. First, the Abvisor Auto Valve, which integrates easily with the patient's existing Foley and drain bag. Next, a unique double check valve on the infusion line simplifies aspiration and infusion. And finally, a syringe with a contamination shield enhances the closed system, helping to reduce nosocomial infection risk. The heart of the Abvisor is a unique valve that connects directly between the urinary catheter and the drain tube. Once it is attached, the system never needs to be opened again, maintaining a sterile urinary drain system. When fluid is injected into the system, the diaphragm within the valve is automatically inflated, occluding the drain and directing fluid into the bladder. In this inflated position, you are able to accurately measure intra-abdominal pressure. After approximately two minutes, the diaphragm collapses and the valve automatically opens, allowing the injected saline to drain into the drain bag. The valve remains in this drain position until you infuse saline to obtain your next trending data point. To set up the advisor, you will need a 1 liter saline bag, an aseptic solution, a 4x4 tray with sterile gloves, and a standard arterial line transducer. If you intend to patient mount the transducer, you'll also need a 4x4 pad and some tape for attaching the transducer to the skin of the patient. Let's get started. The first steps can be done using clean gloves. Open the kit by removing the protective Tyvek lid. Remove the blue sterile drape and place it under the Foley connection. Take the saline spike from the kit, remove the protective spike cover, and spike a saline bag. Peel open your transducer kit and drop it onto the tray. Prep the Foley connection with antiseptic solution. Now with sterile gloves, remove all attachments from the transducer. You may leave the flush device in place or you can remove it. The advisor will function either way. Connect the transducer to the stopcock and position it so the transducer is upright with the stopcock. 
then cap the transducer. Check that all the connections are snug on the T connector. If your transducer has a non-removable stopcock and flush device, be sure to remove the advisor stopcock and connect the transducer stopcock directly to the T connector. Aspirate saline and flush air from the system. Stop injecting saline once it is running out of the tip of the advisor valve and all the bubbles are cleared from the tubing. Flush the transducer by opening the cap and continuing to inject saline until it runs out of the end of the transducer. Now cap the end of the transducer with the yellow cap provided. If you're using a transducer with a permanently attached flush device, activate the flush device to allow saline to flow through the transducer. This should be capped as well. Notice that no pressure bag is required for intra-abdominal pressure monitoring. It's now time to attach the advisor to the patient. Put the advisor tray with all the contents onto the bed between the patient's legs. Disconnect the Foley from the drain bag and hold both exposed tubes upright to prevent urine from leaking onto the bed. Pick up the advisor valve and tear along the perforation of the protective bag, exposing the barbed connector. Push the urinary catheter over the barb. Then slide the protective bag down the tubing, exposing the urinary drain connector and connect the drain tubing to the advisor valve. You may now tear the protective bag at the second perforation and discard it. Set the Foley valve and drain tube back down between the patient's legs. Once you've attached the advisor valve to the urinary drain system, you cannot disconnect it without risk of damaging it. Now mount the pressure transducer to the patient or the pole. For patient mounting, place a 4x4 on the thigh at the level of the iliac crest in the mid-axillary line and tape the transducer in place. If you choose to pole mount the transducer, place the transducer in your pole mount bracket and adjust the bracket to the level of the iliac crest in the mid-axillary line. Once you've mounted the transducer, plug it into your cable and monitor and zero it just as you would normally zero an arterial line transducer. Well, that's the hardest part. From now on, we can non-invasively measure this patient's intra-abdominal pressure in less than 30 seconds. <music> Measuring intra-abdominal pressure is easy. You just place the patient in the supine position. Be sure the transducer is at the level of the iliac crest in the mid-axillary line. Wait for the patient to be calm, not coughing or straining. For adults, infuse 20 milliliters of saline within 10 seconds. Allow the monitor to equilibrate. You'll notice slight respiratory variation of the pressure. To standardize the measurement between all clinical providers, use the lowest end expiratory pressure seen over two screen sweeps. You can test the responsiveness of the system by gently tapping the bladder through the abdomen and noticing a pressure spike on the monitor. In approximately two minutes, the auto valve will automatically open, the fluid will drain, and the pressure will decrease to zero. Note, if the pressure does not completely decrease to zero, there may be some fluid remaining in the drain tubing. Drain the fluid into the drainage bag, and the reading should go to zero, indicating the advisor valve has opened into the drain position. Record the infused fluid in the INOs. You should repeat this one-step infusion process every one to two hours for the first 12 hours to establish a trend and detect any significant pressure elevations early in the disease process. Normal pressures should not exceed 12 millimeters. Readings in the 12 to 20 millimeter range are considered intra-abdominal hypertension and should be treated using medical interventions based on your hospital protocol.
A reading above 20 millimeters may indicate the abdominal compartment syndrome requiring immediate aggressive intervention, including surgical decompression if necessary. Many institutions have adopted nursing protocols and treatment algorithms for intra-abdominal hypertension. If your institution does not have a protocol or an algorithm, you can obtain them. As well as clinical information regarding intra-abdominal hypertension, visit the World Society in Abdominal Compartment Syndrome website at www.wsacs.org. By monitoring all high-risk patients early and often, you will be able to detect intra-abdominal hypertension before the patient develops the abdominal compartment syndrome. This allows you to intervene and change the patient's course, initially with medical interventions and at times with surgical interventions. The result will be better patient outcomes, shorter length of ICU stay, and reduced cost of care. Remember, this video is intended only to supplement the instructional materials that came with your advisor. If you have any questions, contact Convitec at www.convitec.com. Thank you for your interest in the Advisor Autovalve Intra-Abdominal Pressure Monitoring Device.